Hi friends. I hope this, I'm actually using this old fashioned headset instead of my like nifty difty new ones because last time people complained that they couldn't hear me. So I'm hoping this will have a better connection. I am very excited. I'm going live with Candace Langford um, from South Africa. Uh, Nurture Your Vagina. What a great handle. I wish I had that handle. Um, and um, I'm waiting to hear her. Let's just see. You know me, I'm always nervous that these lives aren't gonna work, especially when they're coming from South Africa. So, um, hi guys, hi Kathy, hi Abigail, hi Paula, hi Toby, wet, I don't know, you know. Anyway, it's nice to see you guys. Um, it's such a funny time for me to be going live, I have to say, like this doesn't usually, this is not my usual time. I usually do evening time in Manhattan. Um, I don't know if you can appreciate in the meantime, you know, you see that sign back there, Sex Points, it's the cover of my book coming out on March 9th, but it shows up backwards on, um, on Instagram and on, on the photos and it was making me crazy and I kept trying to figure out if there was a way to flip the photo like you do on Zoom, but I couldn't. So I had somebody create the poster for me backwards. Oh, Candace is here, I see Candace. Okay, hold on, let me invite Candace now. Hold on a second, let me see if I can. Okay, there we go. Nurse your vagina. Let's send my request. Works. We're, I'm so excited to have all of you here. Um, you're gonna love Candace. She's adorable, and she has the most best. A she has the best accent. <gasps> there she is. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay. I. Oh, it's slowing down. You're freezing up. Uh, I'm always afraid that this happened. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. I see. I just oh, see your mouth. Oh, there we go. The filter and then us. Did all sorts of things. Hello. Can How you are you? Okay? Good. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I just said to everybody that I went back to my old fashioned headset because last time people complained they couldn't hear me. And I said, thank God we're having you on with your adorable accent because I'm always so jealous. I'm just jealous of people with those. I know you don't think you have an accent, but then you think <laughs> us Americans have the worst accent. So there you go. <laughs> So how, how are you? I'm very good, bad. thank you. It's been a busy day. I've, I know it's midday for you, but I finished work um, about two, about an hour and a half ago. Just had dinner quickly, and now I'm here. So, well, very, we very really busy. appreciate that you're here. We really are. And um, I'm only going to keep you for a half hour. I only do the lives for a half hour. But maybe we could start by saying you're in South Africa. And can you just tell people what you do? Because it's very, very cool. You're cool. But what you do is cool. So why don't you just talk about it for a minute? Awesome. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I am a physiotherapist and I have a special interest in, in pelvic and sexual health. So here in South Africa, we don't say I'm a specialist in. We have to just say I have a special interest in something. So my field um, that I work in is typically pelvic. Oops. What have I done? I'm back. I don't know. Okay, there you go. Yes, you said, Sorry. here's what we got. We got that you, your field that you work in is typically. <laughs> that's what you said. <laughs> yeah, so, so my field, that, the field that I work in within, the, within physiotherapy is pelvic floor dysfunction and sexual dysfunction. Um, and, I mean, that would, might sound like a niche within a niche, um, but it is quite a broad field. And I'm sure that you know that in the pelvic health world, we are assessing all sorts of things from your menstrual cycle to your breathing patterns, your movement patterns, and really just trying to use our neuromuscular skeletal knowledge as physiotherapists to, to best facilitate um, rehabilitation or improve quality of life when it comes to your, your sexual function. Um, what, so made you, what, made you, what made you develop this special interest? <laughs> Um, like what made sure, you, so, as a general physiotherapist, what made you decide, oh my God, I, this is what I want to be doing? Yeah, so I actually, I actually studied um, something else before. I studied marine biology and ecology. I did a double major at UCT in Cape Town. <laughs> oh my God, I had no idea. Can I have you yeah. back again live to talk about whales or something? Okay. Uh, we can, but it was a very long time ago, so I don't know how much I remember. <laughs> Um, but I can, I can try. Um, so I, in, that, in that field, I developed quite an interest in um, reproductive health. And that was kind of where I was focusing. And just life circumstances, I ended up finishing that degree and then studying physiotherapy straight afterwards. And as, in, in our physiotherapy studies, we don't do a lot of pelvic health. We do about 
three weeks and in those three weeks we probably do like three four lectures and those are my absolute favorite lectures of the entire degree so as why, as why finished, do you think that was i think i had a really already developed this interest in um in in sexual behavior reproductive behavior and when i started hearing that and learning a little bit about it within um um humans as opposed to animals i was going um, to just the animal biology piece had a piece of this too as i'm listening to you this is great trajectory uh huh go on sure yeah so it just i just it was so captivating and i realized how little i knew and how little the people around me knew and uh it it disturbed me that it was so taboo and in the class you know um people would be giggling and laughing and and not paying attention because it was just not not because they weren't interested but i think it comes from a place of a place of fear and a place of lack of knowing and not knowing you know what do i do with this awkward information she just said sphincter you know <laughs> so that that also captured me and this this lack of information and how taboo it was just made me want to find out more made me want to dig deeper and the more i did dig deeper because it's such a growing field and we we have this new information made available to us all the time it's just it's I, i'm it's just so attractive how could anyone not want to be in this field <laughs> that's amazing i mean and i think you're really hitting on something cuz um so i run a women's sexual health center but i also on the administrative side run the men's center and the one place where i feel like the women's sexual health is running ahead of the men's sexual health which is fascinating to me is in pelvic floor physical therapy because i i would think maybe it was 5 years ago. i don't know how long we've been doing this but it feels to me like maybe 5 to 10 years ago is when the world of women's health pelvic floor physical therapy kind of opened its eyes to how much of an impact this has on women and i feel like just now it's starting with men also and i wonder and we're going to go a little field but i wonder if this has so much to do with us sitting all day and on computers all day not just covid related but just our lifestyles just because i know you're into yoga as well so maybe you can speak to that a little bit yeah absolutely so um not not everyone but a, a number of times a day i'm assessing the way a person sits and i'm not i'm not a big advocate for the perfect posture but i do take note of the amount of hours we we spend in a certain posture so one of those things is sitting and when we sit on our pole or when we when we sit and if we're sitting slumped down and we on our coccyx what it does it takes your whole pelvis into a posterior pelvic tilt brings your coccyx for, um, forward and almost shortens your pelvic floor so now we've got this tension in a seated position for however many hours a day and then those people have to stand up when they're stuck in this posterior pelvic tilt they stuck with a tight pelvic floor they might be crossing their legs through the day and they've got a lot, a lot of tension and all of that's going to now impact your pelvic function when you for example want to sit on the loo and now all of a sudden relax your pelvic floor to pass a stool or relax in order to allow for penetration or reduce discomfort with penetration for example so certain absolutely we need to sit on our sit bones and not our coccyx <laughs> i'm shift i shifted as we spoke i mean i i'm, I'm so like i also feel like i got a standing desk because i started realizing how much i'm spending my life sitting and how detrimental that is so i don't know if south africa's big on standing desks but i feel like everybody i know in the united states is starting to get them not huge i uh, i see and hear of them every now and then but i mean they are around but i haven't really seen very many people using them to be to be there i'm so curious of the people listening now i'm curious if any of you have standing desks i i feel like it has changed my life and not only that but i got one on wheels so i can turn it to face the window as opposed to the wall what anyway sorry just doing a little ad Lovely. for standing desks so can i ask you a question do you we we see tons and tons of vaginismus like i feel like we're vaginism central and um I make jokes about that and one of the reasons we're so good at it is because we have the medical people and we have the therapists working together and I'm curious if you feel like lifestyle in any way I mean I'm always disabusing people of the idea that vaginismus has anything to do with sexual abuse because it's not related it is just, it's I feel like that's the worst um stigma that these poor vaginismus patients walk through therapists will spend years trying to find out where their sexual abuse was it's, but i feel like it has more to do with sort of again lifestyle movement how we have learned to what do you think i'm so curious on your opinion on this 
Yeah, so uh, I, I absolutely agree. There's a, I mean, there's a stigma in itself just speaking about sex or so that, that patient coming to you and saying sex is painful. And then when they know that the first question that you're going to ask is, you know, is something about their sexual abuse, it's, it, it's a huge problem. And it's something that we really need to be mindful about and, and kind of trauma sensitive when we are speaking to these individuals because maybe they don't want to talk about it or maybe it's not anything to do with sexual trauma. And uh, yeah, there are so many factors. I mean, as a physiotherapist, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not looking at that, that side of things. I'm not analyzing and helping that person process that trauma. I'm working with their body. I'm working with right now, what physical adaptations that person has got or, or mal adaptions that that person, person might have that is contributing to that, in, that um, experience of vaginismus. And, None of those are with current, you know, sexual trauma. It's, it's, it's with the way you stand, the way you walk, the way you clench. Are you, are you a bum gripper? Do you grip your bum all day? Are I love that. A bum gripper. Do you clench your jaw? But, a bum pardon? gripper. That is great. A bum gripper is, did you make that up? Because I feel like we should like, you should. I've heard it enough. <laughs> oh. I love I've it. I've heard it I... a number of times, but I mean, I don't know if there's a specific name for it. I, no, I, don't know I love it. I feel like you should. You should patent it, a bum gripper. <laughs> Make sure you clench the glutes. Or, or no, it's bum, but grump, bum gripper. It's maybe. perfect. Okay, keep going. I'm sorry. Are you a bum gripper? I, I'm sorry. I, I, I made you go down. That. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah. So there's so many things that we can look at an individual in what they are doing right now and how that is impacting the vaginismus right now. We're not. We, we might be, if there is a person with trauma in their past, yes, we are kind of, we addressing the neuroplasticity and trying to create new neural pathways from that experience, but now we're addressing the now, and that's not current trauma typically, um, but yeah, we could be looking at breathing, anxiety, are you clenching your jaw, Do you, are you someone that you know, has a lot of headaches, how is that impacting your breathing? Is your breathing impacting your pelvic floor? Is your choice of exercise irritating your, your pudendal nerve and giving you pain? And is that pain causing you to clench? There's so many things to look at. And it's not just, yeah. We oh, my God. I, I feel like I want, to come, I want to come see you myself. Okay, so here, let me ask you a question, Candice. What do you see the most of, would you say? Sure. Um, for some reason, there's been a, a peak in vestibulodynia. So that's been, that, that's been something that I've seen a lot of as of recent. Um, no, do you know why there's been a peak of vestibulodynia? Because I feel like people are finally acknowledging it exists. And so people are writing on it. And so women are like, oh, my God, I'm not crazy. It's not in my head, which is what they've been telling me for years. So I think that's one. And two, secondary vestibulodynia is often also due to oral birth control. So if somebody happens to have a propensity to react to it, I think that is why. I, that's my theory as to why. And, but I'm sorry, I interrupted you. You're seeing a lot of vestibulodynia. Go on. Yeah. So I absolutely agree. It's no longer just being brushed off as another um, thrush and just being thrown um, antibiotics. Um, and yes, with this awareness um, uh, about how contraceptives might be impacting the person, then yes, that, that growing awareness is definitely increasing the amount of referrals and um, diagnoses. Um, and then I, I do have a few quite complicated patients with complicated histories, you know, endometriosis, repeated surgical procedures. It might have been a traumatic delivery with a, a tear or a episiotomy that went wrong and not been repaired. So, and it might be someone that, you know, I've got a few of those complicated, complicated patients. They just have a diverse history, I suppose, in their medical history, but I love that. I love to look for patterns and find the little things that we can do in that person's day um, to, to make their pain better, to make their, their experience better. So overall, um, I would probably say sexual pain is a huge one. And I think it's because it's something that I speak about. And because I'm so open about it and comfortable to speak about it before I know it, someone typically has developed a relationship with me online and they feel as though, if I tell Candace this, she's not going to smirk or brush me off. You know, she's not going to tell me it's in my head. So I think that's where my increase in 
sick um, pain and penetrative disorders is coming in. Yeah, you're, you're getting a lot of hearts there, and I think it's because I think that whole idea that there are people out there, that there are professionals out there who will take your pain seriously and not sort of brush it off as in your head, which mm. makes me crazy. As a therapist, I'm actually trained originally as a therapist, and like. I feel like the medical establishment, the physical establishment always says if they can't see it and they don't have an answer, it must be psychological as opposed to, I don't know, we don't understand it. We need to find solutions. So it's, I, of course, women are going to reach out to you because they feel like you hear them and that, and you are so, if you're not following Candace already, you have to be. It's nurture your vagina because she's so fun. She's just fun. Although you have, is it summer there now? Because you, like, you're at the beach all the time and I'm. In 18 inches of snow and jealous as all hell. What's going on there? <laughs> yeah, so we are in summer. It's February now. It is our hottest time. When I drove to work this morning, it was 36 degrees, but that's Celsius. I know you're Fahrenheit, so I I wouldn't know how to how to convert. It's warm. And then now at 30 at at 5 p.m. it was 31 degrees. So. It's hot. Okay, well, Very we're humid. in the snow here, and I wish I could come visit you for so many reasons, one of which is <laughs> I would love to get out of the snow. So, um, so if you weren't giving women advice, like you were just saying, what are things women should do, if they're not having pain right now, if they're just, you know, trying to take care of their pelvic floor region, what would be the most, like, practical, comp you know, advice you could sort of give women? So... I'm mean, interrupting for one I, second I, because somebody just said they want to talk about Bartholomew, Bar Bartholin cysts when it comes to sexual health. I feel that issue and education about those cysts are always left out. Do you have something you want to say about that? Or Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'd be more than happy to. So okay, so why don't you spend a minute talking about that and then I'll get back to you about what advice you would want to give women. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. So with regard to Bartholin cysts, it might be causing a few things. We might look at your aversion has caused an aversion and, and that's now impacted your, your approach to intimacy in general. Has that impacted the way you see yourself? Has it impacted your body image? Because that, we know body image has an impact on your sexual satisfaction. So we need to look at those things. How has that bath and cyst impacted your sexual experiences holistically? And then is, it, is there pain? Can you pain just explain to people who might not know what a bath and cyst is? Okay, sure. Yeah. So you've got a Bartholin's gland um, on your labia minora, almost like internal of them. And that facilitates secretion of, of um, lubrication or just moisturizing the labia minora and that vestibule region. And what can happen is that you can get almost like a very thin flap of skin growing over that. Um, and now we, it fills up with fluid and it can be anything from the size of a pea to like a golf ball. And I think it does get quite a bit bigger than that. Not that I've seen um, one that, that, that is that big. But because now on that labia minora, you've got the swelling um, that can be painful. Some people don't have too much pain around it. And um, sometimes just the sight of it might make someone perceive it as painful. So that in itself, so that's the Bartholin cyst. So sometimes they do burst on their own. Don't try and pop it yourself. It either needs to be drained with like a small incision, like a tiny, tiny, tiny straw. <laughs> yes. Or they, sometimes they take you through um, to theater and then they'll drain it and remove um, the entire cyst that might have developed there. So um, with that, like I said, it might be impacting the way you see your sexual experiences, the way you engage or interact with someone because you might be anxious about that experience um, and, and if it does or doesn't cause you pain, you might be worried about what they say, those types of things. And that impacts your, um, your overall, it might impact your libido, it might impact your, the way in which you engage, the positions you choose, a variety of things. But then with the Bartholin cyst itself, if you are experiencing pain or discomfort, you might just feel it. Usually in the presence of pain, we tend to clench. So if you've got a sore shoulder, you might be grabbing and gripping and guarding we do the same thing in our pelvic region. You might not be taking relaxed, big breaths. You might be holding your tummy in tight. You might be clenching that, those, those pelvic floor muscles. All of that is going to Im impact your, your urinary function, your bowel function, your sexual function. So we need to look at those things. And then if, the, if it has been removed and then you've got a significant, I've had, have I, I've had individuals that have had repeated surgical procedures and that scar tissue might be causing you pain now. 
So it might be that you've got a bit of dryness around that scar. It might be that you have got a little bit of neural irritation, fascial restriction, scar tissue, a variety of things. We can really go on. Um, but we need to look at these things and an assessment is always, always worth it. And, and scar tissue, just you don't feel when you hear about scar tissue as it being like, that's the end of it. You can really manipulate, soften. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that can be done with scar tissue. I want people to know that. And so and the odds of having that a lot of those cysts and getting in the bar, you know, with scar tissue is pretty minimal. So don't go down that route if you happen to, you know, have this issue. But I think you made a really, really important point, Candace, which is that sometimes something that's happening in one part of your sex life has an impact on other parts, right? So if you feel like you're having pain, you can have intercourse, well, you can have sex without having intercourse, but you can feel really bad about yourself and feel like less, less normal. And because of that, start avoiding sex. So you don't want to have things like the snowball. It's really, really critical that you don't have things like the snowball. And I feel like that's, that's why seeing professionals who can handle things Makes a lot of sense. Somebody asked, I don't even know. Somebody said, do you know a good gynecologist in Johannesburg? And I'm laughing because I don't even know. Are you in Johannesburg? No. no. So I'm not, in, I'm not in Johannesburg, but I'm in KZN, which is kind of right next to you. I can't think it's inland from us. Um, yeah. So, um, so, so you know, no, I, I would say DM, someone, but I can DM, find someone. DM, maybe you can suggest a place where they can find somebody. I would say yeah. DM, nurture. And, and by the way, I was laughing because nurture your vagina was, is also nurture your pelvic health. What, what, you had switched your, your handle for a little bit. You explained to me why, but it was like <laughs> funny. So, so my website is called Nurture Pelvic Health, right? And when, when Instagram changed their rules and there was a lot of fear in and around removing pages vaginas, and banning vaginas. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because I mean, already Facebook doesn't like the word vagina. So I can't have nurture your vagina on Facebook. It has to be nurture pelvic floor physio. Um, so with, with the two being aligned, I thought, Oh my gosh, my page is definitely going to get targeted. Um, so I created another account to, as like a backup account, I really did just kind of, follow I was a bit of a sheep I just followed what everyone else was doing and um, because I wasn't sure what was going to come of this new this new rule that they implemented but I seem to be doing fine I haven't been shouted at yet or no one's deleted me no you're, you're doing great and I don't know about you but I I'm feeling a little enraged by the sex police because there's all of this stuff on that's misinformation really um very sort of specialized kink that is fine. I have no problem with it, but that's okay because it doesn't use words like penis and vagina. And, and those of us who are trying to do some sexual health are really getting, you know, in, like, it's just, I was thrown off, in, I was thrown off TikTok. Oh, sure. I've I never know. figured out TikTok, but. Oh, I just had a, I just, I, the truth is I have somebody helping me with social media and she puts me on TikTok. I'm like, so she just put up this one with me pretending to knock on my kid's door and then realizing they're masturbating. Like, obviously there's nobody masturbating. Like, it's just me. Anyway, it, it hit 3 million people. And I'm like, why do 3 million people want to watch this? I do not understand. But anyway, it's pretty funny. So, but I was really, I was thrown off of TikTok. So oh, trust me, I think you're smart for, for doing what you did with Nurture Pelvic Health. But Okay, now we're going to get back to my other question because we have a few more minutes. If you were giving women advice, if you were giving women advice on like the best way to approach your pelvic floor, make friends with your pelvic floor, take care of your pelvic floor so that it will serve you in good stead, what would you say? I would say number one is education. So if anyone's listening to this, they are ready, they've taken a step in the right direction because it's that lack of education and the fear of the unknown that keeps us from exploring our sexual health, from seeking help from professionals, from digging deeper, from advocating for your sexual pleasure. So educating yourself is, is definitely the place to start. And it might just be engaging, being part of the conversation, listening, looking at pictures, getting to know your anatomy. Um, that is, that's always my number one. And then if there are any concerns, if, the, if you're experiencing pain, if you just don't know, if you feel like something's wrong, but you're not sure what it is, go and speak to someone. It, you know, it, nothing is too much for us. Nothing is over the top or information like overly sharing. I, I quite enjoy it when someone starts with that. I'm like, oh, tell me more. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, seek help, ask questions because 
people like us are passionate and eager and waiting to help you because we love what we do. So there's people available. Um, yeah, so when it... Yeah, so no, yeah wait, I what were you about to say? No, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And I would love it if you would touch on, because I do think this idea of like, learning to like do certain yoga positions or just learning to sit in different positions. Like, you know, if you, if you, if you were down to your best friend and you were saying to your best friend, like, here's what I would recommend, you know, like at least once or twice a week, you should, you know, sit down with your legs crossed or not, you know, like, you know, sit on the floor with your legs sticking out or, cause I do think there's something about the way we, or stretch, make sure you're, stretching your glutes or stretching your bum or stretching your, you know what I mean? Like, is there something where you feel like you could just say to women, this would be like a good, a good way to go. We should be doing yoga once a week or whatever. So three things, general exercise. It doesn't have to be specific to the pelvic floor. If you went for a walk three times a week or a jog, walk, jog, whatever it was, general exercise, you're going to be incorporating your pelvic floor. Then number two would be using breath work to, uh, to your benefit. So nice, proper diaphragmatic breathing, making sure that you're able to almost meditate with it um, with regards to tuning into your body, checking in, doing body scans. There's a, a form of breathing that you can utilize with a, I don't like to call it meditation because I know that there's a bit of stigma around that. It might stop people from going towards it. But there's a, a practice called yoga nidra where you learn how to check into your body. So that's something that is so, so brilliant to practice. Because, for example, if you are in an intimate experience and if, if you are struggling with pain, instead of just completely dissociating, you might be able to say, I know that area of my body. I know that I'm safe. I can feel that that part of my body, for example, your pelvic floor is clenching and I'm holding and I'm gripping my tummy because you have that capacity to tune in. So you're learning how to connect to your body, which is essential in pelvic health. Then the third thing would be with regards to strengthening slash releasing pelvic floor. Please excuse, I think there's people playing outside. Um, good so for them. So you hear a bit of screaming and all sorts of thing going, things going on outside. They got a I'm jealous, good um, for them. Yeah. <laughs> so even though it's pitch black outside. Um, so then the third thing would be not not doing the you know typical kegel but rather practicing mobility routines so mobility routines it's not just flat out stretching and it's not just it's not just high intensity work it's mobility routines learning to control your muscles through their full range of motion and if you are feeling absolutely lost then yoga is a great way to introduce that so those would be... That's amazing. Coffee. No, that's amazing. Get some exercise. Just move. Just move, which mm -hmm. I just am constantly telling women, move. Two, mm -hmm. learn breathing. Yoga Nidra in particular could be helpful in terms of really being able to tune into your body. Mm -hmm. And mind -body. the mind-body connection. And that really, I feel like that is so critical so often when we're dealing with pain issues. And the third thing you said was... Um, learn to do moving stretches. I think that's what you were saying, right? Yeah, so it, essentially if I were to name it myself, you're learning to do dynamic controlled exercises. So it's not necessarily like a fast move and it's not just holding a pose or holding a stretch. It's control through movement. So you might be in a squat and you're slowly transitioning to another movement and using that, is, it's, it's almost like, like your bicep muscle, you're learning how to control, let it go, and control, contract. Is, is there a form of exercise of besides yoga that does that? I mean, it's, that sounds a little bit like not not um, so much uh, martial arts, but um, uh, what's oh, the you know the slow, the very slow martial arts? Um, tai oh. Chi. Yeah, Tai Chi. Exactly. Right. It sounds a little Tai Chi ish, but. If you wanted to recommend to people if they wanted to get started with it, because I think this is fascinating, where would you suggest they maybe get started? Yoga or something else? Yoga. I, yoga. I, I love referring people to yoga. If there's, if there's um, experiences of pain, oftentimes yoga is, is, is a good start, but we do need to make sure that that individual that's taking the class is informed and aware because we don't want to overstretch. We don't want to try and get you into some kind of pretzel. We're just trying to move your body and control that movement. So it doesn't have to be an overly complicated flex yoga. It can just be a nice kind of 
it can just still be strengthening, but it's controlled movement. Otherwise, I mean, on my page, I've got a, a reel, a highlight reel called mobility. And in that, I've always saved whatever mobility routines I've done. And that's a nice place to start. I love that. And I think, I think that would be unbelievably helpful to people watching to get onto your, because I think your mobility reel is great. And I'm looking at us, we're out of time. I feel like I could talk to you for hours and maybe we'll do this again sometime. I would love that. That um, sounds great. I totally want to send you my book when it comes out. I, I, I think it's available in South Africa. I don't, Amazon doesn't, you don't have Amazon in South Africa, right? I've ordered one thing from Amazon in my life. Did you get it? It arrived, but that was the only thing. And then since then, I've been a little bit scared because apparently it was quite shocking that I've managed to get it's a, it do in time. So there, yeah. there is, the European seller of my books is the book depository. So I think they sell internationally. So, but if you, I'll, we'll be in touch and I'll get your address and I'll just mail you a copy. So um, we can continue this conversation. Everybody who's listening, um, you should totally be following Nurture Your Vagina. Um, Candace is stupendous. I just, the nice, one of the nicest things for me about Instagram, and I am like an old lady for Instagram. I call myself Instagramma. But one of the nicest things for me <laughs> is that I've met some really unbelievably impressive professionals. And, um, so I really want to thank you for making the time. I know how busy you are. No, well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm, I'm honored to be one of the people that is on one of your Six Points Live. So thank you so much for having me. I really do appreciate it. And let's, and let's nice. make this happen again, okay? Yeah, yeah. No, I've loved it. I've, been, I've had a good time chatting with you and laughing away. So thank you for having me. Have a, have a good night, Candice. Bye-bye. Thank you. You too. Cheers, darling. <laughs> I, I'm not very good at this. I might not exit. Yeah, me either, but I'm going to stop the live. <laughs>